Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. This one we're going to be looking at more rocks again and textures of rocks. Now not all rocks are the same, there are different kinds of rocks and different types and rock forms and things so it's nice to have a variation or a different range of different textures for rocks that you might want. So I've been doing a little bit of experimenting to develop a few more little rock texture techniques on top of the ones that you've, I've done in other videos. So let's have a look at them. Now this first texture you can apply to a flat piece of rock that you already have. For example, this one is a fairly smooth rock, but then I was able to add that to the rock surface. Now you're gonna blend up some paper in the blender, the kitchen blender. <laughs> Then with a sieve, you're going to strain the water off. So that you're going to get paper pulp. No glue necessary, just the straight paper pulp. Then, on a piece of plastic, I'm going to just splat some down there. A reasonable bulk is okay. Then I'm going to put a cloth on top and just flatten it and absorb all that water. Then when I've got most of that water out there, I can turn it over and peel the paper off so I've got a nice flat piece. Then I'm going to apply some glue to the surface of the rock I'm going to texturize. Then carefully I can apply that to the surface. Now that can have the tendency to peel like that just on its own, so it is good to be able to apply some tissue paper or toilet paper, kitchen towel or serviette. And it's good to apply that on there to unify it and stick it down. This way you can get sort of rough little patches or blobs between semi-smooth or smooth bits of rock. Now that sort of gives a roundy blobby sort of texture because you squash the paper mache down. A way to get a slightly sharper texture is to get some of that paper mache and just throw it on there. Just like that, so it sticks and leave it to dry. And that may take a day or two, depending on how much water was in your mache and your climate and how dry your surface was. Now when that's dry, it will stick on, but it won't stay there. It will tend to flake off. So you need to put the paper towel on top. First that layer of, that layer of water and glue. 50-50 more or less. and then pounce it in. So when it's painted, you can see you get a little bit rougher texture than squishing it like in the first example. So the next kind I quite liked was this rounder form, a little bit smoother but rounder and blobby. What I did there was I took a polystyrene ball, a normal ball would do fine, then I got some newspaper, mushed that up in a bucket and then slapped it on there and then just like the other one used some cloth to compress it, drain off as much water as possible and let it pretty much dry, then stuck that to the paper as a, the basis of another start of a rock and then just to unify that again once again the paper towel with glue then the dry brush technique of painting. That's quite a decent one. Using a polystyrene ball is sort of like moulding so I thought well moulds, using moulds are probably the best and most accurate. Here what I did I got some clay laid it out flat with a a bit of concrete rock here, I gave it some texture, then upside down I then poured some wax to take a wax mould. The first thing I tried there was just using uh, just paper, and it turned out fairly reasonable, pressed into that. 
the, and then, of course, the paper towel on top. The paper towel unified it, and it painted up OK, but the form is relatively undulating, but it's quite cool. So I used the same, the same uh, mould and to get this sort of texture a lot more detailed with its, like the first one, just some uh, that paper mache and then pressed into there and let it dry. That took a long time though and there was the risk when I peeled it out that it would stick in there. Now the difficulty with this one is trying to get it out there without it breaking so I thought well if I'm going to reinforce it with the paper why not put that on first. Then I got some of this and then squished the water out and let that dry. So now it has a pre-coating of the kitchen towel but it still is sort of flimsy on the back. But I quite like that one, probably the best of that kind of texture. So what I did on another mould, a little more aggressive, I covered the back of that in normal paper with glue and paper mache and even went to the extent of adding threads underneath that to give it strength and that, yes, is a lot stronger, it's not going to break. So I liked that idea. Now I took a larger wax mould, needed a little bit thick of thickening, it could be, could do with a lot, being a lot thicker, but I took that mould and applied the same technique, the paper towel first, then the paper mache, uh, suck all the water off, let it dry, and then I've stuck it onto a paper. Now the reason for sticking onto a paper like that is that after a while, when you move your sets, they tend to bend and stretch and stuff, and they can then tear, rip, and also fail and squash. So by adding this paper to the back there, it gives it a lot of rigidity. So then we're going to paint it, getting first a dark colour. Now a mid-tone. Then some highlights. Hola. Oh, let's go. Ahí está. Yep, sí. So that gives it quite a nice 3D effect. And this one is another one from the same mold. Very light. So we put all those bits of experiment together and this is the rock face that we came up with. And on a final note, thanks to our Patreon supporters who helped this video get to you.